secret cargo truck scandal at Mexican border. Just when you thought Obama was a total joke comes a new bombshell report from Judicial Watch that shows he was much worse than anyone previously thought. This is a scandal that dwarfs the fast and furious debacle where Obama had his administration work with drug cartels and gun runners in order to stop them. Advertisement, as with most things Obama related it ended badly. For Barack and for America. Thankfully in just six short months Trump is ending the Obama era abuses and making this country safe again. In a major change from the weak Obama era regulations, the Trump administration is finally getting tough with border inspections. Trump is actually allowing customs officers to screen all cargo trucks entering the U.S. from Mexico. According to Judicial Watch, Mexican drug cartels are foaming at the mouth as one of their many transit scams is no longer. U.S. Customs and Border Protection uses X-ray technology and other non-intrusive tools to screen 100% of cargo trucks crossing the southern border. 100%. Whereas during Obama's eight years we only did a random screening of trucks crossing the border. We felt like we were the welcoming committee and not like we were guarding our borders, said veteran U.S. Customs agent Patricia Kramer, the order was to facilitate traffic not to stop any illegal drugs from entering the country," Kramer added before leveling her gaze at Obama and saying, We want to enforce the law. That's what we signed up for. Kramer is a canine handler stationed at the Nogales port of entry in Arizona and is the front line in the war on drugs, she said illicit drugs are pouring in through the southern border, especially massive quantities of fentanyl, an opiate painkiller that the Drug Enforcement Administration D says is more potent than morphine and is killing our children in record numbers. Advertisement, approximately 471,000 trucks pass through the U.S. Mexico border monthly, according to the U.S. Department of Transport. Rick Berry gets biblical and passionate defense of President Trump. President Donald Trump is not perfect and the liberals love to point out at any flaws he may have, conveniently forgetting their own of course as they throw their stones and shatter their own goddamn glass houses. And Rick Berry has had just about enough of the slanderous attacks and he went on the offensive the other day to Newsmax. Advertisement, we don't get confused that Donald Trump is a perfect person, that he's the be-all, the in-all, Perry said. I tell people from time to time. You know the good Lord used King David the best I can tell, King David wasn't perfect either. But he was the chosen man of God. Let's go make America great again. King David in case you have forgotten, ruled between 1010 and 970 BCE, and according to scholars, united the people of Israel, led them to victory in battle, conquered land and paved the way for his son, Solomon, to build the holy temple. Perry continued, Listen, Americans wanted a major course change in this country and they got that. Donald Trump's not going to stand out in front of the American people and say I'm perfect. That's not who he is, Perry added before saying, but he does stand up to the American people and say, this is what I am, I love my country, and this is my vision for America and I'm going forward with it. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a rodeo, grab a good seat. Listen, we have a cabinet that works well together. We have a president that does have America's best interest. This comes after liberals were shocked and stunned and probably horrified to learn that Trump brought back Bible meetings to the White House. There is now something that has been dubbed the Trump Cabinet Bible Study and to show just how devoted President Trump is to God and his country going on in the White House. Ralph Drolinger, the founder of Capital Ministries, told CBN News that some of the Trump's closest advisors are now participating in weekly Bible studies. They are committing their lives to their country and the one true God. Drollinger is a former NBA player and has been a member of many Bible studies and he called the latest one he lead the best Bible study that I've ever taught in my life. They are so teachable, they're so noble, they're so learned, he added. The list of frequent attendees includes the CIA Director Mike Pompeo, Health Secretary Tom Price, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, Education Secretary Betsy DeVoe and Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue. 
According to sources at CBN it's been over 100 years since a White House administration has held actual Bible studies and it makes it all the more impressive. It's been at least 100 years since an administration has held a formal Bible study group, according to the report. President Trump himself always has an open invite to the Bible studies and is given a copy of Drollinger's outline each week. Legendarily devout, Vice President Mike Pence wants to start going as soon as he gets a hole in his schedule. He's a very busy man, Drollinger couldn't say enough good things about the Christian men in Trump's cabinet. Advertisement, I just praise God for them. And I praise God for Mike Pence who I think with Donald Trump chose great people to lead our nation, he told CBN News. Wikileaks just exposed who Robert Mueller really is and it will make you furious. Democrats have been very desperate to discredit Donald Trump and ever since he won the elections they have been making up stories to show in a negative light to the public. Trump is accused of working with the Russians and he even got a special counsel appointed to his case. Ever since Robert Mueller was appointed as the special counsel to Trump's investigation regarding his ties with the Russians, many people have been wondering who Mueller actually is. Well, now we know the answer to this question thanks to the founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, who took it to Twitter to announce that Mueller is great at framing people for a political agenda. You can see his tweet below. According to Subject Politics, this isn't the first time Mueller has done this. He also played an integral role in convincing the American people that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction in order to get us involved in a war with Iraq. Of course, as we all found out, that was a total lie. This is a game changer. If Robert Mueller wants to save his credibility at all, assuming he has any, he should resign immediately. Now we all know that he's an expert in turning nothing into something. He wanted to frame WikiLeaks by sending a plane load of people in Iraq and now he wants to frame President Donald Trump for having connections with the Russians during the elections. He even expanded the investigation in order to look into Trump's previous business transactions and he impaneled a grand jury so he could charge him. Mueller is part of the swamp that needs to be drained. This is not good news for our president but we believe he can take anything that is thrown at him. It's too bad that Trump can't fire Mueller, but it would be very wise if he resigns on his Jeff Sessions announces four leakers have been charged and probe is widening. A lot of classified information has been leaked lately. As a result, Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced that the Department of Justice will take a few steps in order to stop the leakage of classified information which gripped the federal government since Donald Trump became president. Ever since President Trump took the office, a lot of classified information was leaked to the media and foreign adversaries, according to Sessions. Western Journalism reports, in the first six months of this administration, Dodge has already received nearly as many criminal referrals involving unauthorized disclosures of classified information as we received in the last three years combined, Sessions said at a press conference. We are taking a stand. This culture of leaking must stop, Sessions said. Sessions is determined to stop the leakage of classified information because it damages intelligence missions and capabilities. Western Journalism reports. Soon after I arrived here in February, I initiated a review of our leak investigations and prosecutions, Sessions said. I reviewed how these cases were being referred and handled and was concerned with what we found, too few referrals, too few investigations with insufficient resources dedicated to them. Sessions will do whatever it takes so the people responsible for the leakage will be prosecuted. He also announced that some of the four people were already charged with unlawfully disclosing classified material or of concealing contacts with foreign intelligence officers. Western Journalism reports, We will investigate and seek to bring criminals to justice. We will not allow rogue anonymous sources with security clearances to sell out our country any longer, he said. After transcripts of Trump's phone calls with the leaders of Mexico and Australia were leaked to the media, Sessions made this announcement. He also added that the government can't perform when its officials can't discuss problems with foreign leaders because of all the leakage.
the government and its officials should be able to talk over the phone without fearing that their conversations will be leaked to the media. However, the people responsible for the leaking do not think that this is seriously damaging our country and our government. Michael Savage accurately predicts what will happen to U.S. if Trump's immigration plan fails. Michael Savage is a very smart man who has been around the block about 20 times more than most. In short he knows what he is talking about. Savage is the son of an immigrant and came out strongly in support of Trump's new immigration plan and issued an ominous warning to all Americans if it were to fail. Advertisement the GOP establishment and the Democrats want to kill the bill and as Savage shows, it is vital that we pass it and Trump's agenda on immigration becomes law. Michael Savage said, We're no longer living in the age of the Statue of Liberty, where we can take in all of the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. No, my friends, those days are over. Correct. Those days are long gone as Savage devastatingly explains the critical difference between 1883 when the State of Liberty's poem was written and the one CNN thinks drives our immigration policy, and today. He rests the blame squarely on the introduction of the welfare state. They were not coming here to sit on their fat behinds and drink a beer, or whatever they do. Savage said noting that without welfare to abuse the lifestyle of immigrants in the past was drastically different. They worked their behinds off in factories. That's why they lived 16 to a room. There was nothing waiting for them. They did it grimly, hoping that their child or children would do better than they did. That was the American way, they did not expect to go to the front of the line and push the native born out of the way. Correct and savage, although the left will say otherwise, was sure to clarify that he doesn't hate immigrants. He is simply, and correctly, opposed to immigrants coming to America and claiming benefits because they don't have any skin in the American game, no blood sweat and tears to make America what it is and in turn makes them feel they like they contributed to the great experiment that is America. It is a vital link that assimilates people into our country. When we give handouts to immigrants in this country they do not integrate with our culture as well. Because they don't have to. Change is hard but necessary. Advertisement, then using the Somali population in Minnesota as a brutal example to back up his claims Savage said, if the process continues, the culture and tradition of the local population will disappear. Charles Krauthammer warns Trump fans to be prepared for what's coming next. Charles Krauthammer has not always been firmly on the side of President Trump. He has bashed him when he thought he was wrong and he has praised him when Trump does a good job. Of course these are just Charles' opinions but it is worth noting that he is an independent voice. And in such hyper-partisan times we will all be well served to listen to such voices. Advertisement, and Charles has an ominous warning for all Trump fans. Charles came out in support of what Trump said last night in West Virginia where he said the Democrats are using the Russian investigation to cheat the voters they couldn't win over at the election booth. They can't beat us at the voting booths, so they're trying to cheat you out of the future and the future that you want," Trump said to a roaring crowd. They're trying to cheat you out of the leadership you want with a fake story that is demeaning to all of us, and most importantly, demeaning to our country and demeaning to our constitution. And Charles knows the knives are out for Trump and went on Fox News to issue this warning to members of the political establishment, including Republicans, who want to remove Trump from office. Krauthammer warned that removing the sitting president from office would be a catastrophic mistake that would cause a rupture in the country. I think we are really headed into very choppy and dangerous constitutional waters. We know what the Democrats want to do, they want to get control of the House and then start impeachment. Now, I happen to think, as you know, I oppose the Trump candidacy, I don't think he is very well fit for the presidency, but fitness is not a reason for impeachment and removal, high crimes are, Krauthammer said. Here we have, we have a prosecutor looking for high crimes. With Watergate, you started with a crime and then you try to find out what happened. Here, they are looking for a crime. Perhaps they will find one, I don't know. As of yet, I haven't heard of one. Collusion is unseemly, 
but it ain't a crime. So, you have got a political establishment, mostly Democratic, but there are some Republicans who would like to see him taken out of office, he said before warning of the disastrous consequences if they try it, advertisement, I think that would be a catastrophic mistake. It would cause a rupture in the country where people would say when we people, the ones who have been abandoned and when we elect somebody we like, our guy gets taken out? I thought we had a stable democracy. Again, I think he is unfit, but that's not the grounds for removal.